Hello, and welcome to a Pyrian Flax RimWorld playthrough. I haven't done a RimWorld playthrough in a while. Um, I'm keeping the music on because I absolutely love the music in RimWorld, and it makes it nice and tricky for the editors as well, so there you go. I've only added a couple of mods in, or three of them, I should say. Prepare carefully, which lets me design uh, the colonists a little bit better than just have the random ones. Quality Builder, which just lets you set a minimum quality requirement when you're building stuff, uh, which is kind of handy. And Gurime, which lets you add... It adds a bunch of new foods and stuff, because I like the cooking in the game for some reason. And I've looked up a guide on how to do a little bit better uh, when it comes to cooking. Uh, so I'm going to have a look at that. I'll show you guys that in case maybe some of you weren't aware of it. So, new colony. I'm going to go for Crash Landed, which is my favorite. But Rich Explorer is really good, but that's kind of an easy mode, I think. It's very easy to get going. But Crash Landed is the classic. Uh, so let's go for that. I'll go for Cassandra, we'll go for Classic. I'm tempted to go for some challenge, because the last few rough ones have ended horribly. Um, but I think... Uh, casual players who still want a challenge, threats are dangerous but not brutal. Uh, rough is threats can be quite dangerous, not recommended until you've got some experience with the game. I do have some experience with the game. Like, I've played a lot of RimWorld, but I've not like, I've not min-maxed it. I've just kind of clowned around and played it on stream a lot. So, uh, let's go for Rough anyway. Rough Cassandra. Uh, random seed. I, I always take the random seed and add a few letters and numbers. And uh, let's go for 100% globe coverage. This will take a wee second to generate, but fuck it. We're doing it anyway. Alrighty. Here's our planet. Um, I'm still trying to figure out exactly what all these towns mean. It doesn't seem to matter where I place myself. I still get raided. But I think it comes into effect uh, when it comes to traveling. Um, you can travel sort of overland. Uh, by caravan, which I still haven't done yet. I'm quite. I, I, there's a lot of trepidation around it for me, but uh, I'm gonna go for a, a, a wooded area with hills. Uh, I like having hills and I like having trees because I tend to go early on. I tend to go for um, wood. I'm uh, generally a wood fueled economy uh, that works for me anyway. So this will be sort of temperate forest with large hills, um, sandstone and slate. 50 day growing period. So when it says this, when it says growing period, 50 days, 11th of winter till the 1st of winter, I think that means your stuff only grows that year, that time, or, or that's when it can't grow? I'm not sure. Um, it's quite hot in the summer. Year-round growing temperature, granite, limestone, sandstone, a year-round growing period, gets hot in the summer, doesn't get too cold in the winter, decent amount of rainfall, large hills, forest of deciduous trees, let's try it. Let's go for it! All right, so I can prepare carefully now, um, which is, I think, kind of interesting. Um, it certainly it lets you design your people. Um, otherwise, I tend to just sit here randomizing for like quite a long period of time. Um, I mean, you do tend to end up with some pretty bizarre people. This person is a ranch owner, amazing with animals. We could train animals in like seconds, but she's an alcoholic and she's got a blocked artery. And it's no good. It's no good. This is a mute mathematician, incapable of any kind of carrying, any kind of social stuff, cannot use any kind of weapon, and has asthma. I mean, you can see how this gets difficult, right? Uh, so let's go for Mason Storm. He's a teacher. He's actually pretty good. But he, he, the things he's good at are not good early on, you know? You need people to sort of get good early on. So, And we need a bodega, obviously. So let's go for prepare carefully. Um, and we'll call this guy Bodega. What? I don't know what Bodega's last name is, actually. We'll just have to call him Bodega, Bodega, Bodega. He is, uh, I think, I think Bodega's around 40. <laughs> Much like me. Childhood. He was definitely an abandoned child. And, uh, adulthood. 100%. He was some kind of bodyguard? No, he's not a bodyguard. Castaway, math torturer. My goodness. Oh, you, thank God there's a drop down list. He was kind of a soldier, wasn't he? Herb world sex slave. My goodness. Is there assassin? Is that one of them that you could be? Assassin. Wow. <clears throat> so. Not great, actually. Can't do anything. He definitely does. That is definitely not his haircut. 
He's not- he's not a skinny guy. He's a bald man. That's why he wears the hat. This is not canon. This is not canon. I hasten to add. I've seen too much, partner. So, alright, this is no good. So you can't even add ones in. You've got to have a random... And then I guess you can add points from there. Well, he's a crack shot, we know that. He's good in melee, but not great. He's not very sociable. He ain't good with animals. Uh, construction, I think Bodega could build do some buildings. Maybe a little bit of farming if he was put to it. He could do some mining, he's not very artistic. Oh, I can't change that. He's all right at research, he can't do no crafting. That's a shame. I kind of want someone who's got access to everything, honestly. I guess apart, maybe apart from medicine. So he could, I want to see what Bodega makes if he makes some artwork. Um, I can cook a tiny amount. Maybe he could talk to an animal, but he can't do no medicine. He's incapable of caring. I think that sounds about right. He's been bitten on the leg and he's got a gunshot wound on his, uh, on his chest. I don't know why I've made him so good at farming. He's not a careful shooter. He's not trigger happy either. He is, uh... Let me see. How can I describe him? Iron willed, definitely. And he ain't no slowpoke. He's not a. Tr he's not trigger happy. He's not a psychopath either. He's. Um, I'd. I'd have him pegged as uh, industrious or hard working. He's a hard worker. Definitely a hard work. Hard worker and iron willed. A vengeful child who became a gatherer. I reckon this would do for a bodega. I mean, you may think it's OP, but, uh, fuck you, it's my playthrough anyway. Frankie Hoover. I like that name. Frankie. Let's go for a random backstory. Wreckage explorer into civil servant. Need a cook. Bodega needs a cook. And someone who can maybe do some doctoring. She loves to cook. The kind of person that Bodega would get. Very sexist, but he's done it anyway. Um, she's pretty sociable. She's pretty, kind of volatile. She's on a hair trigger. First to break in any tough situation. That sounds about right. Relations. She is uh, Bodega's... Um, huh. My fiance. That's his fiance, Frankie. Nice. She's only 26. Oh, Bodega, you dog. Who else would Bodega know? We need a bartender. Floop. Floop's come to come with him. What was Floop's background? He was a uh, son of a blacksmith. And uh, then he became a barkeep. I'm sure, but yeah, bartender, there we go. His name is uh, Slim Floop. Big fan of Bodega. He is definitely not a teetotaler. He is a brawler. And uh, he is... Let me see, what else did he say about Floop? Someone that's good at listening, like a, a classic bartender type, you know? Staggeringly ugly. <laughs> His face looks like a cross between a drawing by an untalented child, a malformed fetus in a jar of formaldehyde, and a piece of modern art. Others must exert conscious effort to look at him while conversing. Good God. No, no, no. That's no good. I would say that uh, as a barman, he's going to be a night owl. Floops. I think Floop's a big old fat guy. It's a big old guy. Yeah, Floop. That could be Floop. That could be him. Slim Floop. Oh, that's uh he's a he's a reasonable shot, you know, he can he can shoot, but he's more into the melee. He's very good at social. He's a bartender for goodness sake. He ain't one for animals. He's learned a little bit about medicine along the way. He's a heck of a cook. Uh, he can build pretty well. He can grow. He has had to grow hops. He's basically a farmer. He ain't so good at mining. He loves art, but he's terrible at it. 
These guys are all OP, but fuck it. Starting resources and equipment. Oh my goodness. Let's... Wow, we could add something in. Or we could just go with it. I'm trying to think, what what would Bodega bring with him? He'd bring some beer. Where's the beer at? Damn, it's not in there. No beer? Dang. Can't believe it. I don't believe it. I do not believe it. It's medicinal beer. Yeah, I knew it would be on here. Bodega's medicinal beer. Alright, that may seem a little OP, but I just wanted to add a bit of character to the start of the game. The three of you awake in your cryptosleep sarcophagi to the sound of sirens of ripping metal. You barely get to the escape pods before the ship is torn apart. Sometime later you land on this unknown rim world. As pieces of the shredded starship fall around you, you start making plans to survive. Cue the guitar music! So this is home. Alright, let's just pause the game and have a good... Ancient danger! Oh my god, there's an ancient danger right behind here. Okay, so... For anyone who hasn't played RimWorld, that basically means that when we open this up, inside it will be at least one mechanoid. Um, and then there'll be sarcophagi, ancient sarcophagi. And when you open those, they can be full of either uh, colonists, um, crazy people, who, kn who the heck knows. But either way, if we can set up gun turrets and stuff, eventually we could open it up. Uh, so it could be fun to open up eventually, but my god, my god, that's tough. But uh, that adds some character, I think. Uh, oh, our dog's called Tin Man. That's an awesome name for a dog. Tin Man! What you doing there? Alright, so let's have a think here. We're going to avoid mining here. I was going to dig in here and build some, some stuff, but we'll, we'll build into here. Um, is that a Mega Sloth? Sick. Those things are good. Alright, so I've been thinking about how to best sort of shape the colony, if you like, and, um, ooh, that's rich soil. I think we might go, if we go around this kind of area, just build in the middle, turn this all into delicious farmland, um, and just sort of, I'm just going to have a series of huts rather than try to m dig into the the earth. And I'll tell you why, I mean, it is safer and your colony is definitely better protected, from things like fire and such, but I just find that it takes so much longer to get going. Um, and we've got a nice geothermal thing here, so I'm going to build... We've got a lot of trees around here. We're going to build outdoors. We're going to go outdoors. I'm going to definitely dig up some of this to build some of the later buildings, but early on we're just going to... Uh, we're just going to go for an outdoorsy kind of thing. Um, right, so... Let's start setting down some zones. I'm going to set a stockpile zone around this is this is probably pretty good and we will build a roof over it um, that's very important you got to do that because otherwise your uh, your stuff sits out in the open and, and rots basically um, we're also going to set orders to chop down trees in this whole area And when we've done that, let me think. So we've got a stockpile, chopping wood, and then we're going to set some growing zones. Um, let's put one right here on this. Actually, that's a little big. Put one there. I like to do them 10 by 10 just because I, I like that number. So we're going to put some potatoes. Um, we're going to put down... So we've got potatoes. We are going to put down some corn. And... I'm going to do berries, and i tell you why. I find found out that berries... Um, oh, where the heck are they? You can't plant them? Strawberry plant, minimum skill 5. Right, so strawberries and berries in general, like these... Um, 
give you joy. I didn't realize it. So if the colonists eat them, it makes them happy because they consider it a sort of gluttonous food, if you like, um, which I thought was interesting. Uh, and then we'll get some cotton. You've got to get cotton going. That's very important. Um, because you can make clothes and stuff out of it. So we've got, we're going to have some some little farmland going on. We've got it on this nice rich soil, so that should help a lot of it grow. Um, do you need another one? I normally do like five. I'm trying to think what else we could grow. Ah, yes, yes, yes. Fear not. Fear not. I'm on it. Heel root, baby. Heel root. Very important. Uh, so that'll be our farming zone. And then we're going to sort of build a series of huts um, around this kind of area. I like to keep my back up against a wall. And then you can get guns covering this entrance, uh, this way, and this way. So we'll go for a sort of three-way. All right, lads. To work. Is he being sick? What's wrong with Floop? Oh, crypto sleep sickness. It happens, Floop. Don't worry, none, partner. Oh, Bodegi, you forgot to equip your famous rifle. Floop, uh, you're going to be the brawler. And Frankie, you're going to be uh, Pistoli. Alright, let's speed it up. See what they go for first. First things first, they're going to... Floop and Bodega are going to start planting. And they should be pretty good at it. So let's just set... One of the other things you want to set is... Um, sleeping spots. If we set them under here, maybe we'll sleep under the uh, under the roof. And then tomorrow we can start building. So I wonder what the growing rate is on rich soil. Fertilization, 140%. That's good. So, oh, did Floop just come on to my gale? Attempted to woo Frankie. Damn it, what floop? What the? Floop is my husband? What the? Oh my god. I fucked up. Floop and Bodega are married. All right, so be it. They're married. But by God, Bodega's gonna leave Floop for Frankie, I swear to God. Ha! <laughs> must have got drunk. A little too drunk that time, Floop, my boy. I go for manual priorities. Um, set firefighting to one. Uh, I set patient to one. I set doctoring to, to two, because it is very important. Um, I set bed rest to, to two. Because I would rather they firefight rather than lie in bed just because they're feeling a bit poorly. I set flick to one so that just when I've told them to do it, they do it right away. Um, at the moment, growing is very important. This is good. We're, we're sowing all these fields nice and quickly, which is good. Floop does not like Bodega, his husband. Affair. Oh yeah, I'm having an affair with, uh, with Frankie. Sorry, sorry about that. Sorry, Floopy, my old boy. <clears throat> but Bodega's gotta do what Bodega's gotta do. So you can see the difference. The uh, the potato plant not on rich soil is at 26%, and the one on rich soil is 3% higher. Whoopie do! Bodega's just having a beer. Hopefully, they're gonna actually bother constructing. Let's put that on two, just so we actually get on with it. Because you could have built a roof, y'all. I'm just saying. Wants to sleep with Bodega. <laughs> of course you do, honey. Don't worry. We'll build a love shack soon enough. I wonder if I'll be forced to bed with Floop, my husband. Just finishing off a little bit of the planting. Can one of you please construct the friggin... God damn, it's tough. I don't know why I can't tell them to, uh... Bodega, could you just finish off building the friggin' roofed area, please? Just 
drinking a beer. I don't know why they're not building it. Someone on someone in the YouTube comments will be sh shrieking at me for some obvious discrepancy, but it's not lack of resources. Major break, floop. Oh, a night owl in daytime. All right, work. Uh, restrict. So what I do is I set Floop to anything, so he can do whatever he wants. So he can sleep during the day if he wishes, because he is a night owl. Um, let's also let's for the love of God, let's stick down some housing here, because these all they're going crazy. Oh shit. Must be symmetrical. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. I get so fucking hung up on these tiny little details. Oh, we need double beds. So I've been reading stuff about how it defines spaciousness and how it defines uh, beauty, and there's a whole bunch of restrictions. Um, visitor, a sickly child named Ed Vitoli. I'm a sickly child. He was a sickly child, knows a lot about medicine. Shit. If we'd almost finished these bedrooms in time, they all could have slept inside, but now they're going to be sad. The sickly child left. She took one look at our shithole and left. Can't blame her. Cannot blame her. What should we call it? Our faction is Bodegas Boys and Gals. Bodegas. Bodegas. Friends. No. Bodegas chums, pals, acquaintances. Bodegas Town. Oh, that's, uh, that's no good. That's the name. Our faction is Bodegas People. No. Bodegas Posse. We're a posse. And we're going to name it after my favorite bar, the Pulsar Sex Pit. <laughs>